everyone, it's Emily and today's day 93 of the Odin Project and I have officially completed the Knight's Travails project. I tested my code to make sure that my solution was fully functional and I cleaned it up and consolidated it. So I am officially done and today I'm going to do a walkthrough of how I completed the project. As a note, there are a lot of different ways that you can solve this project, so this is just one method. I'm going to start by showing you the end goal. So we're writing a function called night moves that will take a start index and an end index on a chessboard. And when you pass them into the function, then it will return the shortest path between those coordinates if you are moving a night piece. So for example, with these two coordinates, we can move from one to the other with three moves of a night piece and the path is listed here, which shows the coordinates of each square that the knight will visit on the way from the start index to the end index. The way that this is accomplished is with a knight moves function that takes a start and an end value as parameters. First, we build a chessboard array. So I use a helper function called build board which is right here, and it essentially uses two for loops to build an array that has 64 indices, and each index contains the coordinates of each square on the chessboard. If we call the build board function in our console, then this is what that array looks like. So you'll see there are 64 indices, and each one has unique coordinates for that chess square. Our next step is to initialize a variable start index which will basically find the index of those starting coordinates within the game board array. So I use a helper function called find index, which will basically iterate through the board array and just find the coordinates that match the target square. And then I also initialize an end index variable that finds the index of the end coordinates within the game board array. Next, I build an info array called BFS info. And for this, I wrote a helper function called build info r, which will take the board game array and then the start index. And it essentially builds an array that mirrors the game board index, except for each index, instead of having the coordinates of that square, we initialize an object that has distance and predecessor properties, and we set each of those to null as default. Later in this function, we'll be manipulating these properties. And importantly, we set the distance of our object that's located at the start index within this info array to zero, because we're going to be moving away from this start index so naturally, the distance of that first index is going to be zero. Next, we initialize our adjacency list. So as I mentioned in yesterday's vlog, this adjacency list was key in solving this project. So I use a helper function called build adj list. And here we build another array that mirrors the game board array except for each index, instead of having the square coordinates, we have an array that contains all of the neighboring squares. So these are all of the other possible squares that you could get to from that first square if you were moving a night piece. So the way that I did this is I built a function called findNextMove, which will take an index, an x value and a y value. And then for each index, it will return a different possibility for the coordinates of the next spot. So I basically iterate over this function eight times so that I can return the values of each potential move that the night piece can make from the given square on the chessboard. And then I have to check if that next spot is contained within the chessboard because we don't want to move the knight to any spots that are off the chessboard. So for example, if coordinates contain negative numbers, then we know that we're leaving the chessboard at that point. So I built a helper function called contain spot, which just iterates over the board game array to make sure that 
our neighbor coordinates are indeed contained within the game board array. And if they are, then we essentially just push the indexes of all of these neighbor spots into an array that we assign to the appropriate index within the adjacency list, and then we return the adjacency list. Next, we initialize our queue, and the first value that we're putting in our queue is the start index. And then we initialize a variable u, which you'll see how we use it in this next part of the function. So next we have a while loop, and while u does not equal the end index, then we set u equal to the first element from our queue. So we are dequeuing our queue, and then we wanna find all of the neighbors of that u square. So the u square is essentially like the square that we are currently visiting, and then we want to look at all of the potential neighbors of that u square, and we do that by iterating over the neighbors array from our adjacency list. So for each neighbor, I use the v index variable to indicate the index of that neighbor square. And we check to see if the distance property for the object associated with that neighbor from our BFS info array uh, we check to see if the distance is null, because if it is, then that means we have not visited that neighbor square yet. And if we haven't visited that neighbor square yet, then we update the distance property for the object associated with that neighbor square. We set it to the distance of its predecessor plus one, because we are moving one square away from the u square. And then we set the predecessor property of the neighbor square to u, which is the square that we are currently visiting. And then we push the v index or the index of that neighbor square to the end of the queue where we nq it. And so essentially we just keep running this function until we have a neighbor square that equals the end index. And at that point, we know that we've reached the shortest path because we're essentially doing a breadth first search by checking all of the neighbors of each square before moving on to their neighbors. That's kind of like visiting all of the nodes in each level before moving on to the next level. So if the match is made, then we set the predecessor of that neighbor square to u and then we construct our path showing how we reached that neighbor square from our starting index. So I use a helper function called construct path, which essentially uses the BFS info array to push the index of each item's predecessor into an array. So we're essentially constructing the path backwards, looking at each item's predecessor until we reach our starting index where the predecessor is null. And then once we have that array, we have to reverse it so that it is in order from start to end. And then I also use the splice method to add our starting index as the first item in our path because that is where we begin our journey. And then we just console.log how many moves it took to reach that point and we return the path in the console. Now the reason that we are using the distance properties in this function is because if we did not, then we might revisit our starting square and then it would send us into an infinite loop. So we need to keep track of that distance so that we don't revisit our square and exceed our call stack. If you are currently completing this project and if you are stuck, I do recommend checking out the Khan Academy exercise on applying breadth first search algorithms to graphs. I will put the link in the video description. If you have solved this project already and you used a different method, I would love to learn about how you solved it if you wanna pop a comment below. But thank you so much for tuning in. Now that I've completed the computer science section of the JavaScript course, tomorrow I start the test-driven development section. So I hope that you have a great day.
Be sure to hit the like button if you enjoy these updates and subscribe if you'd like to follow along on our web dev journey. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.